Okay, this video is why do most nutrition experts promote a high fat diet? And the joke is that billions of dollars are at stake, no pun intended. Okay, so think about it. If the proles ate a low fat, low sodium vegan diet, they would be skinny, okay? They wouldn't have hypertension or diabetes and obesity and it would be hard to make money off them. Nobody makes money off skinny, low fat vegans, all right? And then, you know, why do people assume that, you know, when you see a TV commercial, you assume that they're trying to sell you something. Well, it's the same thing with most of these so-called, you know, nutrition experts that are promoting the high fat diets. Okay. There's a lot of money <clears throat> in keeping the proles brainwashed into eating in a way that's going to make them unhealthy, fat and sick, diabetes and hypertension. I mean, like I said, it's like milk and a cow. You get money from a person every day when they have to take a medication. Um... Also, you'll notice that when somebody who's making nutrition videos promotes high fat stuff, they get far more views. And a lot of these so-called nutrition experts, they have paid, they got paid sponsors, you know, promoting them to promote olive oil, omega threes, caffeine, coffee, tea, soy nuts, all this stuff. Um, so, if you want to get more popular, more views, that's how. That's one big way to do it. I think there's a lot of nutrition experts who are kind of sellouts. They'll give good advice on, let's say, whatever percent, 70%, 60%, 50%, and then the rest, they're making deals to sell stuff. You can figure out for yourself. You know who they are. Okay, and I think there's big money in this. I know there is big money in for some of them that are you know high up on the food chain of doing that. Um, they're getting kickbacks. I know all about this stuff. You'll see that if you like go to Veg Source, for example, that Nelson guy, he's really smart. <laughs> he talks about this and there's a whole bunch of other examples about it. Um, lots of doctors, by the way, they come to me for advice about their patients, about themselves. I got lots of doctors who come to me for advice in their own specialties, which I find humorous, um, and then for their families. And as a joke, I sometimes ask them, I'm like, you know, these are university doctors. I go, how come? You never invite me, you know, to give a lecture at your place. You always want me to answer all your questions. You know, I know m far more about this than your whole department put together. And they always give me a funny look. And they're like, well, Pete, we love hearing you talk. We love it when you teach us. But, you know, we got to get it cleared by our department chief over at the university. And they're not going to like it when you talk about all this vegan stuff. You know, it's bad for business. And you, if you teach the younger doctors all this vegan stuff, it's, you know, it's it's bad for business. You know, that's just the way it is. And I'm laughing. I mean, look how ridiculous this is. What they're saying is, we don't want you to ever lecture in front of our group because if you teach doctors how to cure people, we don't make as, we don't make as much money off the patients if you cure them. You know, there's an old saying in medicine, a patient cured is a client lost. So I find that rather humorous, but it's a little frustrating. You know, I work so hard to try to become a great doctor, and then once you get higher up in the game, it's sort of like they're like, shut up, shut the hell up. You're not supposed to cure these people. We need to make money off them, okay? Stop with this curing BS, all right? Um, and it's kind of like, what the heck? You know, you play on a sports team. I used to be an athlete. You want to win. Everybody wants to win. The fans want to win. The team wants to win. The coach wants to win. The owner wants to win. Everybody wants to win. Whereas in medicine, it's not like that. I'm sorry to say it, but there's no money in curing people. It's like verboten. Um, and so, you know, it's almost like you just have to shut up, accept your role in the factory game, make your money and shut up. That's your reward, not curing people. Forget about that. Um, that's what's why I think acute care is so much better than chronic care because with acute care, the cause is usually relatively obvious. You know, patient falls down, they got a fracture, bone broke, must fix. You know, it's pretty straightforward, the logic of it. Abscess must drain. Okay, but with chronic disease, it's not. Because like we said, most of it's due to diet and toxins. Doctors don't know anything about diet and toxins. And there's no money in curing the patient. And most patients are too stupid and lazy and uncurious to even follow up on the cure. You tell them to go vegan diet, they get pissed off. All right, they want a pill. So that's why it just doesn't ever happen. And it's never going to happen. There's never, I don't think, going to be money in this. I mean, if you really wanted to cure people, you would have these facilities where they come in and they spend whatever it takes, a weekend, a week, 10 days, a month, two months. Camp used to keep people sometimes for months till they get their act turned around. So till it becomes a habit, an ingrained habit to eat correctly and be healthy and they know what they're doing. They know enough to know what they're doing. Patients don't need to know all the information, but they need to know some things. Like, you know, Esselstyn would say, all they need to know to protect their arteries is understand nitric oxide, okay? Um, then the other question arises, oh, oh yeah, what, what are some other things that are kind of funny? Um, 
Yeah, like I said, first of all, patients are under a delusion that the healthcare system wants them to get better. No, not with chronic disease. There's no incentive whatsoever to help the patient get better from chronic disease. There's no incentive unless something would be profitable. And again, that's why I think the Mediterranean diet is by far the most commonly recommended. That and the ketogenic diet uh, by most major universities because I call it the antichrist of diets. It, pr- it, it promises salvation but never delivers, virtually never delivers um, or beyond the short term. And it keeps everybody taking their medicines. They fail it and then they think, oh, well, gee, and now I got to submit to pills and surgery. And the other thing is, you know, why do you assume anyone tells you the truth? You have no money. The patient has no money. All the patient can do is say, thank you. That's nice. Big Pharma can say, here's a bonus. Here's grant money, okay? You generate more billing codes, you get paid more money. And I would say the only reason, this is why you've heard me say it before and it's true, you have to have religion and God in healthcare and science and medicine. Otherwise, you end up with, you know, a joke, okay? And you think that's not true. That's because you don't know anything about it. I spent my whole life deep, deep, deep buried into science, all right? And I can assure you, you have to have God and, and morality in it. Otherwise, it becomes a joke, okay? Like I said, modern medicine, they're promoting all these abortions and they chop up the baby and they make them into medications and people eat the medications. That's cannibalism, okay? That's what you get, okay? You know, you take school prayer out of schools. When I was a kid, we prayed in school. We, we sang religious songs, patriotic songs, all this stuff. Nowadays, you go to school and they try to trick the kid into saying something where that they can then, you know, castrate them, okay? That's, that's insane. But that's where you get once you take God out of the picture, okay? You know, there's so much money to be made. Open heart surgery, you can, they can bill $120,000. Stents, $30,000. So th- why would they ever, in their wildest well, they'd have to be insane to recommend a vegan diet that can cure a patient of coronary artery disease when they could be making 120000 off a patient. And so if you don't have, you know, the most important minority is the individual, individual rights. You know, they're created in the image of God, therefore they're part divine, part beast, and therefore we are obligated to treat them well. They have intrinsic natural rights, deserve respect and kindness. Okay, if you don't have that, then why should anyone tell you the truth or give you a good deal. Why Why not just make money off you? And the standard of care is written for demented patients, intoxicated patients, unconscious patients. <clears throat> it's always going to be that way because a ton of patients are that way. Also, all you guys watching these videos, you're all highly educated, motivated, motivated smart, intellectual, curious. That's not the average American. The average American is a functional illiterate with zero sort of interest in learning whatsoever. The point is the standard of care is made for average people and even below average people who are, you know, drug addicts, uh, like I said, all this other stuff, intoxicated, demented. So it's always going to be something where the patient has no significant involvement, which means typically a pill or a surgery. And then every doctor is obligated to follow the standard of care. They can't get in trouble if they do it. It doesn't matter what happens to the patient. The patient is essentially irrelevant, okay? I know that sounds bizarre, but it's true. As long as a doctor for chronic disease practices the standard of care, it doesn't matter what happens to the patient. They, they can't get in trouble, okay? So if, let's say, it's coronary artery disease, they're obligated, let's say, to prescribe the standard medicines, send them for a cardiologist referral. He's obligated to put a stent in, and he can't get any trouble with that. If he actually tells you to do the vegan diet, you don't do the vegan diet, you have a myocardial infarction, you know, they could say it's his fault. He didn't recommend the standard of care. So it's always going to be that way. That's why change has to come from the individual. If you want to change your health, learn how to eat, avoid toxins, and you'll be healthier, okay? But it has to come from you. It's never, ever going to come from the system. Think about it. It doesn't make any sense that it would ever come from the system. But a lot of people ask me this question all the time. How come all these other diets, doctors are recommending high fat, blah, 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 blah. Okay, one of the things you notice is that I don't get interviewed too much, okay? They don't want to interview me because I'm, I'm kind of annoying. Out of all the vegans out there, I'm the most strict one. I'm, just, I'm kind of like Kempner, okay? I'm more strict than the best, most famous ones, okay? And the reason I say that is because I'm also trying to protect the brain, not just the heart. And people don't want that getting said, okay? Lots of these vegan websites are promoting omega-3s, olive oils, coffee, tea, nuts, soy, all this nonsense. And so you think they'd ever interview somebody like me who's, who points out what a joke all that stuff is? No, of course not. Okay, that's why also when somebody tells you the truth, you know, they don't they don't make any money. Remember um, Dennis Burkett when he showed, you know, if you've got people eating all the junk food, you're going to have a big hospital and the doctors are all going to be rich versus if you're teaching people the, the vegan diet, you'd have a tiny little hospital. The doctors are poor, okay? Um, and so basically these are the things, you know, if you really want people to be healthy, you got to have all this morality involved because otherwise it doesn't work. You got to teach that as kids. I mean, without religion, you're not even a human, okay? You're redefined as just a talking primate, even a useless eater, and there is zero obligation to you. 
The proles have been tricked into eating very unhealthy water, unhealthy food, <laughs> into needing all these cosmetic products full of toxic chemicals. So, anyways, I'm just letting you know. Don't you're, you're going to be waiting a long time if you ever think the system's going to change to help you. It's never going to. The only thing you can do is educate yourself. You know, I think it was uh, John Locke who said the best fence defense a man has against the difficulty of the world is to understand them okay so anyways i hope that i hope that's clear and helpful